This Warlock PvP build has been the undisputed dominant meta for literally three years straight and nothing looks likely to change with the next update. And today, I'll show you how to beat the strongest Warlock in PvP without worrying about which aspects, fragments, exotics, weapons or mods to use. In this video, I'm going to take you by the hand and show you step by step exactly what you should be using and why, so you'll have a fully kitted out meta solo Warlock from top to bottom ready for the Crucible in precisely 9 minutes or less. Start Starting with a little known fact that most people have forgotten when it comes to Solar Warlock. See, something I want you to realize is that despite every new Darkness subclass, every 3.0 revamp, every expansion beyond Light, Witch Queen, Lightfall, throughout all of this, Solar Warlock has been the meta choice. Let that sink in for a second. Despite every single addition and modification to the sandbox, Solar Warlock has remained the biggest swinging PP in the room. Not only that, Solar Lock arguably has the highest skill ceiling in the game. The unparalleled movement capabilities of Icarus Dash, Phoenix Dive and Heat Rises make Solar Warlock a movement player's dream with the ability to truly traverse every direction within a 3D space. Not only that, the kit is so absurdly versatile that you can literally craft your build to match whatever you your playstyle might be. Whether you like to play long and passive or up close and personal in the pocket, Dawnblade can be tailored perfectly to your needs. See, here's the thing, whether you're a new player or an experienced veteran looking for something new, if you ask me what is the one subclass that you could play in all content to the absolute highest level, whether it's Trials of Osiris or Grandmaster Nightfalls, the answer is indisputably Solar Warlock. Solar Lock is without a doubt the single best subclass to sink a thousand hours into in D2. And while that might not be everyone's goal, in terms of pure lethality the crucible as bruce lee once said i do not fear the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once but i fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times all right let's talk aspects when it comes to aspects solar warlock can choose two out of three total aspects icarus dash touch of flame and heat rises what makes dawnblade somewhat unique among classes is that all aspects are equally viable in pvp in terms of ideal aspect combinations icarus dash is mandatory and then you would choose between touch of flame and heat rises based on your playstyle. Icarus Dash is very much the signature movement tech of solo warlocks. If you've ever seen a warlock zipping around the map like a firefly on crack, then you know they're using Icarus Dash. Many would even say that Icarus Dash is the single best movement ability available in the game. Icarus Dash allows you to basically dodge like a hunter, traverse distances at great speed, turn on a dime, and change directions in mid-air. Icarus Dash is the movement that can literally do everything, and it is arguably one of the main reasons why Dawnblade has either been meta or on the verge of the meta for literally years. Make no mistake here, Icarus Dash is mandatory for those reasons. Alright, but that leaves two other aspects, both of which are equally viable and provide outstanding utility. The question of which you should equip has nothing to do with which is better, but rather what your personal playstyle is. For example, if you are a sniper or someone that prefers to play at range with long range weapons, then I would argue that Heat Rises would be right up your alley, which is what you'll be seeing Hugs using in the background footage quite a lot. See, this aspect means you can fire weapons, melee, throw grenades while gliding, but also consuming your grenade will activate the Heat Rises buff, and final blows while this buff is active will extend its duration and grant melee energy. Heat Rises will also give you very close to maximum airborne effectiveness on all of your weapons. In other words, Heat Rises basically allows you to hover like an attack helicopter, take unconventional angles on maps, and virtually always stay at range. A master of Heat Rises is evasive, cunning, and completely oppressive to play against. It feels like their feet never touch the floor, while they remain aloof and airborne, constantly peppering you with shots from angles that shouldn't even exist. If you're a sniper or a scout rifle or pulse rifle main, then Heat Rises is worth exploring. It has an extremely high skill ceiling, but if you take the time to master it, Heat Rises is an aspect that can and will carry you to the highest levels of Destiny 2 PvP. Now let's not forget the equally effective third aspect, Touch of Flame. Touch of Flame buffs the functionality of your grenades. If you are a more aggressive player that enjoys the thrill of pushing into engagements, then you'll enjoy Touch of Flame. Healing grenades allow you to basically take huge damage, but then instantly heal and re-enter the engagement. With the lower cooldown of healing grenades and the Warlock class abilities, you will always have a heal in your back pocket ready to go so you can just keep pushing and pressuring opponents. 
buffed solar grenades are also excellent for locking down areas like zones, heavy or reses. The touch of flame solar nades output huge damage with a girthy radius that lasts forever, which is going to be excellent for objective-based game modes like Trials of Osiris. In other words, if you prefer to be up close and personal, using your grenades as utility to pressure opponents, then touch of flame might be the aspect for you. Just quickly settle a very important debate for me, is a hot dog a sandwich? Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll pick one person to carry to the lighthouse this week and enter them in the draw to win this beautiful emblem. Don't forget also to drop a like and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more builds from me. As a small creator, it means the world to me, so thank you. In terms of aspects, I recommend Ember of Torches, which means that powered melee hits make you radiant. Ember of Mercy, which means that when you revive an ally, you and nearby allies get restoration. Picking up fire sprites also grants restoration and you get a nice plus 10 stat boost to resilience. Ember of Searing, which means that defeating Scorched targets grants you melee energy and creates a fire sprite, while also giving you a nice plus 10 stat boost to recovery. Ember of Solace, which means that Radiant and Restoration effects last longer. In terms of exotics, here's what I recommend. First up is Transversive Steps. If you're a more in your face, aggressive player like myself, I strongly recommend using T-Steps. T-Steps give you increased sprint speed and slide distance. They're the speed boots for Warlocks, like Stompies for Hunter or June Marches for Titan. T-Steps also reloads your weapon after you've been sprinting for about a second and a half, which supports a fast and aggressive style of play. Paired with Icarus Dash, a T-Steps Warlock is probably one of the fastest characters in the game. Next up, you have Ophidian Aspects. Ophidians are currently one of the most used Warlock Exotics in Trials, and for good reason. Plus 35 to all weapon handling and reload speed, and to make things even crazier, plus 10 to aerial effectiveness. At the highest levels of PvP, speed kills. And when I say speed, I mean handling. The ability to swap weapons either defensively or offensively is absolutely essential, and once you put on Ophidians, it's kind of hard to use anything else. Plus, given how fast you are with Icarus Dash, it's arguable that you don't need the speed boost from T-Steps when playing Dawnblade anyway. Just quickly, before we cover the rest of the build, are you struggling with PvP or with going flawless? I have a Patreon with amazing benefits like weekly trials cards with me, as well as Crucible coaching sessions. But not only that, you'll get access to a private VIP community full of like-minded, cracked PvP players to support you going flawless and achieving your PvP goals. If you're tired of struggling in the Crucible and you need a bit of extra help, go check out my Patreon link in the description below. And now for abilities. In terms of abilities, here's what I recommend. For class ability, opt for the Healing Rift if you're more grounded, or Phoenix Dive if you prefer to play in the air with Heat Rises. For melee, Celestial Fire is still the preferred meta choice. Incinerator Snap is fun, but truthfully, just not as versatile. In terms of grenades, it's largely personal preference, but I recommend using either healing grenades, fire bolts, or solar grenades. In terms of weapons, here's what I strongly recommend using, and also what you'll be seeing Hunks use in the background. A good pulse rifle like No Time to Explain, the tried and true Igneous Hammer, or Polaris Lance if you really like making people angry. In terms of special weapons, the standard choices of a good shotgun like Matador or Conditional Finality, your favorite fusion rifle are always solid picks, but the really insane sleeper pick right now is Forerunner, which you may have been seeing a little bit in the background. Of course, if you're a confident sniper, then there's also nothing more oppressive than a floating warlock sharpshooter. In terms of mods, I recommend targeting, dexterity, fastball, unflinching, holster, and bomber times three. In terms of stats, you'll want to prioritize recovery, then discipline, with the rest being pretty much up to preference. Though you will want to play higher inflict if you're playing trials. Of course, just to make it easy for you, you can also just click the dim link in the description below for my T-Steps build that I'm currently using with Solar Lock. Just quickly, if you're enjoying the background footage, make sure to go check out my amazing streamer friend Hugs. Hugs isn't just an incredibly gifted and talented player who recently got Twitch partner, he's also very friendly and entertaining. I strongly encourage you to go check out his stream over here and be sure to let him know that Mr. Armageddon sent you. Lastly, if you've been enjoying the Solar Warlock build, you should try its fearsome counterpart, the Shadebinder, which you can check out over here. I hope this helped and I'll see you all in the Crucible.